Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion this morning. And today I want to continue this whole theme of looking at the Christ child and looking at the, the mystery, really, of the incarnation. So many today view the whole Advent story as fable or fiction. I was reading an article not long ago where the writer was saying he had visited a large bookstore in his city and in their special Christmas section he could find only one in 50 books or so that mentioned the name of Jesus. Some of the titles he recalls were Deck the Halls with Murder and Silent Night, Stories of Romance and Suspense, or The Physics of Christmas, from the aerodynamics of reindeer to the thermodynamics of turkeys. There was another collection of books on Santa, such as Santa, My Life and Times, Santa and Pete, and Believe in Santa Treasury. Is it any wonder there's so much confusion around the real reason for the season? We also make the mistake of viewing the birth narratives of Christ from New Testament perspective only, when a better understanding can only be obtained when we look at them in conjunction with the Old Testament. This is where I want to begin as we continue with our devotions over Advent. Let's look at some of the prophets and first writers of the New Testament who clearly had just one perspective of the coming Messiah. Many of the prophets failed to grasp the very things they were prophesying. In fact, they too were confused, as were the first generation of believers in the time of Christ. So why were they confused? Why was what they spoke about in terms of the coming Messiah so puzzling, so enshrined in mystery? Simply because, from their perspective, many of their prophetic statements about him appear to be contradictory. And we'll look at some specific examples later. Even in the New Testament, those first hearers whom Jesus taught seemed to be confused as to who he was. Some said he was Christ. Some said he was Jeremiah. Some said he was Elijah. Even his own disciples were mystified. Was this really the Messiah? Even John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of the Messiah, was confused. One day he declared, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and he points to Jesus and says, He is the one. Follow him, not me, for he must increase and I must decrease. And then not a few months later, in Matthew 11, when he is imprisoned by Herod, he hears about the amazing works of Jesus and sends two disciples to Jesus to ask if he is the one who was to come or whether they should, they should expect someone else. How odd. Out of anyone, surely John the Baptist should have known. Why would he be so confused? Because in Matthew 3 he declares, quoting from the prophecy of the Old Testament, the axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. From John's understanding of the coming Messiah, he would come with judgment and wrath, as an all-consuming fire, who would destroy the ungodly and establish his kingdom for the righteous. That is John's picture of the Christ, the coming Messiah. Now picture John in prison, and he gets word of what Jesus is up to. I mean, he's out there healing people, bringing them words of comfort, preaching messages of grace and peace and salvation. So what happened to the winnowing fork? What happened to him clearing the threshing floor and burning the chaff with unquenchable fire? What about the kingdom he's meant to be establishing? Why? They are still under the rule of Rome. No wonder he's confused. No wonder he's asking, are you really the Messiah? He hasn't established a new kingdom at all. There's so much about the incarnation of Christ that is shrouded in mystery. And yet, for the most part, we who live on this side of the cross have the incredible privilege of viewing the whole story from both perspectives, from the old and the new. In fact, Jesus pointed this out to his disciples in Matthew 13:17. 
He said, For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. But before this verse, he said, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. There's no excuse, Jesus says, for anyone living this side of the cross for not grasping the mystery of the incarnation. It all makes sense, but only in one person, Jesus Christ. The problem today with so many is that they read only parts of Scripture and they read it out of context and then they draw their false conclusions. Many simply conclude that the birth narrative of the Gospels are myth or fable. Rather than accepting the testimony of the historical witnesses, they invent their own fables about the birth and life of Christ. One I found particularly intriguing explains that the reason the Bible is silent on the years of Jesus between 12 and 29 is because he went to Pakistan to study Buddhism and became a Buddhist lama or priest. But because he had such radical and unique views, he was driven out of the country into India, then into Iran. He just kept going west until... Voila, he arrived in Israel at the age of 29 and he declared himself to be the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, it just, it's hard to believe that people can even make up such stories. Yet they're out there. And if you do yourself a favor and Google some of these myths and legends, you'll find that that's exactly what some people believe. And so next time, what I want to do is look at some of these apparent contradictions that the prophets and early writers of the New Testament had to grapple with. For now, let us bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the incarnation. It is a mystery, Lord. We can never fully grasp it. But Lord, we just thank you for, for the way you remind us in your word that that it is real, that it is not fiction or fable, but that it is fact. And so we just praise you, Lord God, for, for this time of year when we can celebrate the incarnation of our God. And we pray that as we learn more about what the, even the early writers had to grapple with, that we would come to understand the mystery of the incarnation in greater depth. And so bless us as we continue through these devotions in Advent. And may we just come to a deeper understanding of who you are and why you came to this earth, born in a manger, born to die. And so bless us this day. We just lift ourselves to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.